hello and welcome back. So I am going to be working on getting this purple dragon machine put back together today. She's a Singer 27 from, I think, 1905. And all of her paint is dry. She, I threw some oil in her because I can't put any oil in until after her paint is all dry. So she is oiled up. I threw a little bit of lithium grease down into the shaft in there. Um, so she is ready to go. So I've got all of her parts over here, you know, all cleaned in their respective baggies because I need that extra little bit of organization so I don't lose my mind. And I think that I'm going to get started um, on the bottom here just because that is the most awkward to get to. So let me get my little block flipper up and we'll get started. Okay, so I think one of the first things I'm going to do is put the little shuttle holder bracket thing back on here. Um, because it was one of the last things I took off, so that makes sense. So hang on a second. I think I need to move this over to the side there and line it up. Now this little hole here... You know if you can see um, there is a little bit of flexibility there so if I need to adjust it in or out I can I'm just gonna put this little flat screw in there and get that cinched up okay so there you go it's attached um, let me go ahead and get this part connected to the shafts I got a, a shaft up here that's got pivot points I got one down here all right so I just popped this end of the shaft bar thing the flat side exposed the ground side on the inside here and it had a screw over on this side that i could not get out before so we just popped it back on hoping for the best um, i did polish this i know it looks like there's rust it's not it's just the pitting where the chrome or nickel layer has come off okay anyway this down here i need to line up i have one of these eccentric bolts and I need to line that up into the shaft and then the threaded part goes into this little cast piece down here. So let me get that cinched in. Okay, so that is cinched in. So if I turn my little nub up here where the hand wheel goes, you can see it is moving. So that's good, okay. So down here, I have another little flathead screw, actually bolt. To keep my terms straight here and get that started and cinched up down here on this end. All right, so before I get my other big uh, rock shaft on the bottom, I want to get my fork for my stitch length put back in here. And uh, if you haven't seen it before, this is a screw type. So this is going to come in here there is this fork that hooks onto the main shaft inside there, okay? This bearing is going to go on here, and that bearing is going to be running back and forth in this little slot here, okay? So, this little crevice between this nub and this block is where the end of this piece is, okay? So as it goes in and out, this turns. Okay, which moves this, which changes your stitch length. This bolt with its little tabbed washer and the tabs point down, okay, that's going to go through this hole into the back of this block, okay, to hold it all together. I'm showing you that because it's a pain in the neck to get it all in there and a whole lot of wiggling. And I know that you can't see inside of here while I've got my hands and everything. So let me get all of that settled and I will show you what it looks like when it's all finished. Okay, it is in there. I put a few drops of oil on the threads and I'm just turning it in and out to make sure everything's going to turn nice and smoothly. This is whole process. It, it involves usually one or two different picks, a magnet on a stick, a screwdriver, holding your mouth right, all kinds of things, but it is possible, so, you know, don't give up. Have a cup of coffee. It'll be okay. All right, so now that that is in and I have this fork down below, I can go ahead and put those rock shafts back in because I have something 
that I can connect it to down here. Okay, so this is clean, but this bearing here, I've got her polished up like a mirror, and it needs to slide into this slot in here. So actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in there before I get started. Get that slid into place in here. Okay, right there. And then I have a couple pivot screws and nuts that are gonna go up here in these holes on either side to hold it in. Okay, so at this point, I've just kind of put those in by hand on the sides just to hold this in place so it won't fall off. Um, I want to go ahead and put the feed dogs back on. They're gonna go in here. I'm gonna give them one last clean before I pop them in. Okay, so I've just slid them in from the top. There's a little screw on this side that I need to put through here. Tighten that up and then they will be, well, then they will be held in place. Okay, so that is in right there. And I can adjust this later, you know, raising it up or down or something when I'm doing my fine tuning. All right, so on these pivot points here, okay, I have those screwed in, but there are bolts, these 9 16th inch bolts or nuts. I should say. The nuts go on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and put those on either side just so I don't lose them. And I can make, again, an adjustment on that point later. Um, I would shift this back and forth, you know, unscrewing one point and screwing in the next one um, to adjust where my feed dogs are in my uh, little plate. You know, if I need to push them one way or the other, that's where this is going to come in but I won't know that until later. Okay, so now I have this fork. This is the bottom of the stitch length one that we just got put in. And there's another eccentric bolt, okay? The thicker part goes through here, and there's a threaded part here that it's going to screw into. So I just wanna get all of that started. And then there is a smaller nut over on this side that is going to uh, connect to it. And this is also going to be an adjustment point for later on. So um, what this will do, from what I understand, is see how when I'm turning this, it is just barely moving this piece up and down, just like a millimeter or so. Okay, that is an adjustment so that when your feed dogs are moving forward and backward, that will fine tune it. Okay, but let's say, because it is an eccentric bolt, okay, that means that the little center shaft of it is off center, you know, like I am sometimes. And that way you can adjust exactly how it's meshing with everything else. So, you know, later on down the road, if your feed dogs aren't, you know, frontwards to backwards centered up where you want, uh, loosen up this nut change that a little bit and that might help you out okay i'm going to go ahead and put the balance wheel back on because that will make things a lot easier and i just noticed that this was still kind of dirty i i had all of this masked off masked off for so long so let me clean up around here it's not like it's going to be visible or anything but it'll make me feel better um, get my wheel put on and um, I'll be right back. Okay, that is looking better. So now I've got my typical attachments here. I've got my little washer with the two prongs that face down, okay? And then this goes on top. And this actually goes somewhere else. And then this little screw with the nub at the end that I just dropped, um, that's gonna go into the little clutch release knob thing. I am so bad at official names and terminologies for things. I, I just really am. Okay, if I can turn it a quarter turn and it stops, I'm good. Nope, I'm not good. So I need to take this off again. Take this off again and flip this washer this way. Oh my gosh, I think I dropped it. Okay, put everything back on because that washer either goes one way or the other. Ah, 
Ah, do you ever have days like that? And you won't know until you try it, you know? So let me go ahead and get all of this put back together again. Okay, there you go. Only a quarter turn and when it's released and when it's connected. Yeah, it's working right, it's working right, so we are good. Oh, and when I turn the wheel now, we see down here, things are moving. Okay, so that's really good. I am hearing a noise down here I'm not sure of. I think I'm gonna to need to make an adjustment on this length here, but it might just be because I have everything going without any plates, yeah? So that's not a big deal. These are my chickens. They're bannies. They are kind of like feral wild chickens. They don't really, you know, live in a coop because they're, they are themselves. But if you ever hear chickens, that's them. They're beautiful. They eat a lot of bugs in the yard, you know? They clean out a lot of ticks and spiders and stuff, so I really don't mind them out there. I have one more screw that is gonna connect the belt guard to the machine so that's what this is it's just a little flat it goes in there and it's going to screw right there okay so i am going to start out up here getting this into place it goes into this little hole on the side and i'm just going to wiggle it in from the hole got to kind of be able to turn the wheel which is not very practical if it's laying on the wheel here all right, hang on a second. Okay, so you might be able to see a little bit better this way. I'm turning the wheel so I can align this bearing into this little slot here. Come on, align for me. It's still slightly off center. At some point it will pop in there. There it goes. Okay, so now it has popped into place and there is a big flat bolt that's going to go in here and get that cinched in to connect it into place okay so I need to make sure that I have that little slot that that bearing is riding in nicely lubricated okay so it is moving I think I want to cinch it down one more time and throw a little bit of oil in there all right so there we go I figured out what that noise was my feed dogs were way too low and they were tapping into this shuttle as it went back and forth. So all is well now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip it up and wait, oh yeah, it's arm day. Okay, I'm going to put the lifter lever in, sliding it in through the slot over here. And there is a little screw that's going to get screwed into the casting right in there. Okay, and it should be that even when that is cinched in all the way, this still moves really freely. If not, it might be pinching the rim, okay? So you might want to realign it. So that is good. I'm gonna go ahead and get my um, presser bar stuff out. Okay, so I'm gonna put this little piece on first. I've got it cleaned out really well. Uh, the bearing that's gonna travel in this slot is all polished up. So it's gonna pop onto this post Actually, I'm going to put a drop of oil in the crease there. Okay, so we're good there. This is going to go face down on top of it. This little part here, there's a groove in the casting there. It's going to travel in that groove. So, all right. So if I put it here, is it going to get in that groove and yes okay so you can see it's kind of popped in there all right now i have a lot of paint on here and i want to make sure that i don't have too much for it to travel well so actually um move this out of the way here i'm going to get a small little piece of sandpaper and just run it through there this part of the casting up here does not go all the way through to the outside it's just on the inside so let me clean that out really well just to make sure that this has plenty of room to travel okay I think we're good I want to show you on the back here there is a little oil hole right there on the very back okay set in about half an inch or so that oil hole is what's going to reach in and oil this slot here okay so I'm going to go ahead and put some in there and get this piece set back in place. Okay. 
So this is where the needle bar is going to be connecting. I'm just leaving that in place for right now, not dealing with the needle bar, because I need to put my presser bar on top of this piece like that, okay? So that's why this needs to be in there first. So getting it started, sliding through, putting my washer on, putting my spring on. Then there is another block here, okay, with another little piece that's going to slide in the opening over on that side. And I did have that masked off really well, so that should be fine. And then this comes all the way through. And then there's a finial that needs to screw into the top part up here. Got the top of that very shiny. That's so fun. Um, I wanted to flip the camera around and show you, because you've probably seen my setup before, but you know, why not? So basically, I have this polishing wheel here. It's a jeweler's polishing wheel. Um, it's fabulous. It has, this is called a fiber wheel. It's like, it cleans off just about any rust or anything like that. And then I have a polisher over here, and that works great, you know, multi-speed. And then if I flip it around on this side, you know, just ignore a toolbox, I have... Um, I have one of these stands, and it's fabulous for some things. For others, it's not so great. But when, at this stage, what I have, let me see if I can turn my, my tripod thing. I don't think I can. Um, it's basically in this big stand so that it can be held securely. Okay, And I have a polishing tip on that so that I can just hold that, have that going and you know, manipulate my little pieces around it. Got my little compound. And then I have my little, little lightweight, you know, whatever putt putt rotary tool. And I keep a wire wheel on that just for any little finishing stuff. So that's pretty much what I've got going on as far as, you know, doing all of my finish work. Um, so let me flip it back. And this is Shop Kitty. I'm embarrassed to say she doesn't actually really have a full name. She's had different names, and that's the thing, is she's probably had four or five different names in her life. She's probably about eight years old now. She has been Colette. She has been Epony. Epony. She has been Epaulette. She has been, when she was Wormy, she was Skinny Kitty. Um, then she was Old Kitty. Then she was Porch Kitty. And now she is Shop Kitty. You know, she's great. But if you see her wandering around, that's Shop Kitty. Now at this point, I do not have this screw tightened up. It's just in there so it won't get lost, but it is not tight so I can turn, you know, my presser bar all the way around however I need to. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and get my needle bar stuff out now. Okay, so getting my needle bar in here, um, there is a hole that goes straight through the needle bar and the screw that goes in that hole aligns with this part here. And you want to make sure that this cutout side of your needle bar is facing out. So I am just going to tap until I see that that hole is lined up with my screw hole. And that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so there are two different screws that go in here. Um, there's a smaller one and a larger one, and unfortunately I have several smaller ones here. Um, the larger one goes in the clamp part area. The smaller one is going to go through here, and that is going to hold the needle bar securely in place. So let me get those uh, cinched up. All right, I'm going to put the little stuff for the needle bar on down here. Um, this little thread guide is going to go on first. And when you're putting your needle bar together, um, if you do like I do and you keep all of your needle bar stuff together, you're going to end up with two little screws that from the top, they both look like this, okay? One is shorter, one is longer and has a little nub. You want to make sure that the longer one with the nub is the one that you're saving to put this on. Okay, they will both fit in that threaded hole up here in the front, but it's the longer one you want here because this little nub at the end is going to act as the stop that 
the sewing machine needle is going to slide up the groove and this little nub here you can focus is what's going to stop it from going higher than it should okay so come on focus for me well you get the idea okay so make sure that you're using this little screw with a nub at the end so I need to put the thread guide on first and then come back and put the little needle clamp on underneath it and I have it turned over on her nose this way because these can be a pain so having gravity working with you instead of against you is a big plus okay and now this is on my thread is wrapping around this is the front of the machine up there so it's wrapping around that way this thread guide okay um, there's some thread guides where they come around underneath the little needle clamp, but for this machine, it's up on top, so we're going to call that good. Um, I should go ahead and put my presser foot on while I'm here. I'm not putting the needle in quite yet because I don't want to get stabbed, and I still have a few things to do down there. Now, remember that this uh, machine had uh, this little quick release foot on it so I'm going to go ahead and pop that back on right down here okay so that is on um, I am going to go ahead and get my plates put on so I can get everything adjusted underneath so with the slide plates I don't care how carefully you mask when you paint there's always going to be a bit of tightness and you have to come back with a razor blade and really clean up along those slots, which I did, and it's still a little tight, so I'm gonna be working it back and forth and everything. Um, if you ever have it really, really tight, the front one is usually easier to get off than the back, and actually my front one is a little tight here because, you know, I'm still getting her used to her new self. So I use a piece of wood, okay, because I don't wanna get anything damaged, and tap with that piece of wood, okay? And then that'll come off really easy. The back ones are usually tight, and I think that that's on purpose because you don't want them to slide out when you're sewing. But again, use a piece of wood and put that wood up against the back of the plate once the front one is out, and then tap it. Oops, and you can see it's gonna come out that way. So just letting you know, I'm going to clean up a little bit more, you know, and I also clean off the edges of my plates really well and get all of that done so that hopefully they will, the front one should slide in and out, you know, without a tool, the back one, you might need a tool and that's just, you know, as things are. Okay, so I just got this set in here and I wanted to see if I can get the camera to show you. The feed dogs are too far that way, too far towards the underbelly here. Um, so they're slightly rubbing on that. So I need to flip it back upside down and adjust my pivot point so that it's centered more that way. Just a hair, you know, just a turn. Um, but going forwards and backwards, they appear to be very well centered thread take up lever is bumping my tripod there and I do have the shuttle in here the shuttle it was new so you know no problem there so um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in here to hold that plate in place flip her upside down and make that adjustment on the pivot points okay so with that done I'm gonna try to give a final polish to the plates because I need this plate on the front before I can actually try it out so I did clean these, they are old, you know, she's what, 120 years old at this point. So I polished her up on my wheel. I think what I'm gonna do is put a little chrome polish on and hit that with maybe some extra fine steel wool or something, just to see if I can get it a little bit cleaner. But uh, you know, sometimes they are what they are and we'll just see how it goes and I will show you what she looks like in just a moment. So that's the part I just did. This is not done yet. The only real difference is that the background is a little bit darker down here than up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up. But I think that she is lovely. Um, I might be able to put a little bit of alcohol on here and buff that up really carefully. 
uh, before I put it on for a final shine. Okay, I just, you know, finished it off with some of my glass cleaner, and I think we are good to go. So let me go ahead and pop this plate onto the front here. Uh, there is a screw that goes in at the top and one at the bottom, and uh, then we can see if she works. Okay, so that is on. Everything's moving like it should. I'm going to go ahead and put this little plate back on too. Now the screw for this one, it does have a little shoulder on it so that this little port can swing back and forth. And that is so that you can move it over and put oil in there. So don't forget to oil your machine, you know. Let me go ahead and get this screwed on. Okay, it's on, but it's not cinched in terribly hard. If I did, I would not be able to move this over. And so um, it's on hard enough that it's not going to swing back and forth on its own. But I want to be able to move this over when I can, you know, to put some oil in. Or whoever wants to put oil in that would be great um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the little plate on the back and I just realized I have not put her medallion back on so let me get that out too okay so I put it back on um, I use these little brass discussion pins and um, with my little flower I've tapped on the end so you know it all works but uh, the pins are slightly slightly narrower than the holes in this casting and they're all different it seems um, and I cannot get in there and bend them so what I have done is put just a touch of epoxy clear epoxy um, behind there where the little brad is that's going into the machine I have this tape folded so that there's no sticky side up against the machine but that's just holding it on nice and secure um, while that epoxy sets I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm going to run in the house, take a break for a bit, and when I come back, hopefully I can remove that and we can get her timed up. I completely forgot to turn the camera back on. Um, her medallion is on. I actually put her tension back in, and you know, you've seen that before, hopefully, so sorry about missing that. Um, remember, this machine did not have the little Y thingy, that uh, relief tension relief lever thing inside here because it has this. So when you want to release the tension on the thread when you're going to pull your fabric out, you use this with your thumb to push that and then it comes out, you know, so kind of like this type of thing. Boop, like that, okay? Um, I need to put her bobbin winder back on. She is already cleaned and put back together and this little mounting bolt right here. Here's the little bracket. It's going to go through there straight in like that. And I just opened up her nose so that I could tighten up this little screw right here, which is what is making this presser, presser bar. I keep wanting to say shaft bar. I don't even know anymore. Um, but making that secure so it's not going to turn. So I have it turned so the feed dogs are down and I have this pushed all the way down and lined up so the needle, once I put the needle in, will go, um, you can see the hole, the needle hole right there in the middle of the toes. And then, I can, once all that is lined up, then I can go ahead and tighten that in, okay? So that is all good. I'm going to go ahead and put the needle in also, and then I need to put the plate, the front plate, back on. Oh, and I wanted to show you, when you're using a shuttle, it's going to go down, bounce, and then come back up, okay? That's how they work, down, bounce, and up, which is kind of cool. It gives them that special, like, little noise that the regular... Uh, rotary hook, oscillating hook, things like that. They don't have that same cool little bouncy noise and everything. So let me go ahead and get this threaded and um, we'll see how she works. All right, so I have it threaded. So the first test, I just have my bobbin thread coming out here, is to see if it'll pick up the bobbin thread. And no, it's not going to. I need to make some adjustments, but you know, it can't hurt. Sometimes you get lucky the first time. So let me open this and see what I have going on. Um, I think I need to adjust where the shuttle is. 
Okay, so I am over here at my workshop treadle cabinet here. It's not beautiful, but I can make things work on it. So um, I have her all threaded up on a very short stitch length. Hang on, let me turn that in so it's a little bit longer here or else we're not going to see anything. There we go. She's running really well. Okay, so I get to the end here, and remember this is the tension release, pushing this, well, lift up the feet, push this, that pulls out, and I forgot my scissors, they're over at my table, but anyway, this is the front, okay, nice, neat stitches, and the back, in a different color thread, so you can see, a very nice neat stitches. So yeah, she is doing great. Um, to engage the bobbin winder, you know, you have to release the clutch up here. So I just did that. And then this whole thing bends forward. So you can see that now it's touching the uh, treadle belt. When I'm not using it, I bend it forward so that this is not touching it, okay? I've also seen people pull it totally in front of the belt you know, so that when they want to use it, they bend it back and it engages. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. I don't think it makes a, a bit of difference one way or the other, but just so mad so that when you're sewing, it's not engaged. But if I go ahead and pretend I am winding a bobbin, whoops, hang on a second, engage it. Okay, and something's not right. Why is that not working? You see that, how it came to a stop? That wheel's not turning. Hmm. Let me flick this onto the front and see if it's that direction. Everything is good. Well, it looks like I need to make an adjustment because it is stopping right there. So I will do that in just a moment. Okay, so hopefully you can see. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? I'm having trouble. The little nut that goes right behind here. It was off. It was completely off, and I don't know what happened, but it disappeared at some point, and I didn't notice it when I was putting this back on. So it is back on now, and I am just trying to figure out exactly which adjustment I need to turn this little screw, because this screw, which has the nut on the back now, um, that is going to regulate how close this gear is pushing up against this little threaded part. And if it is too close, it won't turn. If it's too far, it won't turn. So it's just kind of finding that sweet spot. And wherever it is, the head on this screw should stay stationary, okay? So once you find the spot where everything's turning really well, I know my camera's bouncing, sorry about that. Um, then you go ahead and tighten the bolt on the back to keep it there. So anyhow, I think I need to just put a little bit of oil in there. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think that she's great. I think that she stitches really well. Here's a extreme close-up of her stitching. Really happy with that. Um, I'm going to get her buffed off again and uh, take some final pictures. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I almost forgot one thing, and I remembered when I set her up in here for a glamour shot. Um, in this little hole right there is a hole for an oil wick. So I have a little piece of like 3 16th inch hard felt, and it takes a little piece, about 3 8 7 inch long, pop it in there, fill it up with oil, and there's like a little bitty pinhole over here in the casting, and that will slowly add just a bit of oil so as this you know, goes back and forth, it stays a little bit lubricated. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out because I forgot it earlier. Oh, and there she goes.